Hey guys, let's make sure we are live. Uh, YouTube and their commercials. Always have a commercial come up. Okay, good. We are live and ready to go. Awesome. All right, welcome guys. Glad to have everybody here and uh, excited for another fun uh, workshop today. This will be the last of our year-round gardening workshops and so I'm glad to have everybody here with us. While we're kind of waiting, we have again um, a, you know, over 200 people that have uh, signed up and so um, we should uh, kind of introduce ourselves while we're, while we're waiting for people to, to kind of go in. We had about 30 people that were, were waiting. So where are you guys from? What's your garden zone? How cold is it? What's your weather like right now? I'm interested to know that as well. Um, <laughs> so uh, just kind of looking here, we've got Minnesota, Indiana, Texas, Louisiana, Wisconsin, South Dakota, South Carolina, 88 and humid. Maryland, Ohio. We had rain last night, so um, we've been in the hundreds, but it's it, the nice thing is, is it's bringing some afternoon rain showers. They haven't, haven't had anything super significant yet, but it has been nice to have a little bit of rain in the afternoons uh, at least, so um, kind of cools things back off at the end of the day. So, all right, um, okay. Just kind of waiting to see as people settle in here. New Jersey, Seattle, Oklahoma, Texas, Ohio. We're up to 50 viewers. I think we will go ahead and kind of get started. <clears throat> okay, so welcome to day number five uh, of our year-round gardening workshops and hopefully you guys have enjoyed these. Uh, I, I've had a lot of positive feedback and, and comments and so uh, I, you know, I think this will be something that we do every year. So I appreciate you guys being here and being a part of this. Um, let me just turn myself off for a second. I do want to make sure that we thank our sponsors. Honest Seed Company and Smart Pots have both donated um, for the fifth time uh, prizes. And so, guys, this is a big deal. I mean, they they really put a lot into uh, these workshops as, as well. And so. Um, go give them some love. I've, I've included their uh, websites down in the description below and uh, so make sure you go give them a little love because uh, they are great and I really appreciate that they didn't even blink at sponsoring five workshops uh, and, and giving prizes for all of those. Uh, there's also a workbook associated with this workshop. If you haven't already gotten it, um, there's a link down in the description of the video you can click on. It'll take you over, you sign up for it, and then uh, it'll send you a link so that you can download that. Um, I know that somebody had a problem earlier today. Um, sometimes my stuff might get stuck in, because it's got a link in it, um, it might get stuck in your, your spam uh, email. So, so maybe check there if it doesn't come through right away. Uh, but we should have a, a fun little workbook that um, my wife put together. Uh, it's just a 10-page workbook that kind of goes through the stuff that we've talked about over the last three days. So uh, make sure that you go check that out as well. And then make sure you hang around. We are going to be talking a little bit about the Year-Round Gardening Master Course. And I do have another free course offer for those of you that sign up today. Um, you get the opportunity to get a free course, uh, and we'll talk about that at the end as well. Okay? All right. So um, things are going to run just a little bit differently today. My wife AJ is still upstairs and she is trying to do her best to uh, keep track of your guys' questions. But we have our little grandson over today and so she's trying to wrangle him and, um, and, and watch the comments. So um, normally the backup person, if my wife can't do it, would be my daughter and she's the one that it, it's, it's uh, her son and so um, anyways, we, we, we're kind of just winging it here. So do this, if you could, please. Um, I'm going to have a presentation for you. Uh, today's presentation should be about 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes long. 
um, hold on to your questions until the end of the presentation and then I will answer them. AJ is still going to try and get them over into the spreadsheet, but it would help if we if she didn't have to chase up and down through the feed to um, grab those questions. So if you could hold on to your questions until you know I kind of get towards the end of the presentation, we'll do the prizes uh, prize announcement again, and then you guys can can ask uh, as many questions as you want, uh, like we've done the last few days. So yesterday we went almost an hour. Um, and which is fine. So you guys just ask away. Well, I'm sure we'll have plenty of questions about hoop houses and cold frames today. All right, so this is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to review just a little bit the timing of planting, which we talked about, you know, big time yesterday. And so if you uh, didn't watch yesterday's workshop, you should go back and watch that as well, because I go in a lot more depth in that. But I did want to talk just a little bit about timing. Then we're going to talk about fabric row covers and how we use them to extend our growing season. Uh, then uh, hoop houses, mini hoop houses, and cold frames. Okay, is what we are going to cover today. Now, just so that um, the, you know, we're already up to 80 plus viewers here, so that I'm not wasting your time. Um, this, the, the things that you're going to learn today are are not really intended for container gardeners. You could do a little bit of season extension using hoop houses and stuff in containers, but um, it's really hard to get winter gardening to happen when we don't ha when when you're you're using containers. So I, I just want to make sure that everybody recognizes that you do need some space in your garden because we are going to be putting hoop houses and cold frames up to help us. And again, this is kind of designed for the cold winter zones. Uh, zones you know three through eight uh, is is basically who we're talking to mostly today. Um, and I am going to make an offer at the end. Um, today's the last of the workshops. Uh, tomorrow is the last day that the master course is open. And so we are going to be talking about the master course. And so if that offends you, this isn't the right place for you. Okay. All right. So who am I? Um, a lot of you have already been here and, and, and seen this part, but my name is Rick Stone. I am the founder of the Gardening Academy and the principal author of Our Stony Acres. I'm a master gardener and have been gardening for 23 plus years. I really need to change this slide because it's more like 25 now. Plus, my wife and I grew up in gardening families, especially my wife. My, my mother-in-law and father-in-law just had amazing gardens all the time. And then all of our grandparents did, and so we come from gardeners and and uh, we do a lot of growing I was actually pretty proud the other day my brother called up and said um, that uh, he's gonna put in a garden too so that's always exciting uh, when I convert family members okay um, again just a little review of what we're gonna what we're gonna talk about today uh, and and remember let's hang on to our questions until the end and that will make it a little bit easier for AJ to um, take care of those. I, I do see one question about closed captions. Um, I will, I'll go in and look. Um, I thought that YouTube automatically created those, but I'll, I'll go in and look. Maybe I've got a setting wrong, um, but I'll go in and see if I can get the closed captions to come on. Obviously, a live, they can't do closed captions for, but the replays, um, I'll see what I can do to make that happen so that you guys have got those there. Okay? All right. So, um, really quick, um, just as a review, I do want to um, I do want to uh, talk. Sorry, this is why I, I got to quit looking at the feet. I'm going to focus for you guys. Um, I wanted to kind of review because one of the important things about growing in the winter time is is that we have to be planting at the right time. Okay, so if you are planting things by transplant. So this would be like broccoli family plants, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kohlrabi, um, Brussels sprouts. We are going to put those transplants out in the garden about six weeks before our first frost date. Okay. Um, if you are planting directly by seed, this would be for things like lettuce and spinach and uh, you know carrots and beets and turnips and all of those things those we are going to be wanting to start by seed directly in the garden about eight weeks before our first frost. And then with whatever varieties you're planting, remember to anticipate about an extra 15 days to maturity. Okay, So if your lettuce normally matures in about 60 days, 
it's going to take 75 in the fall. And the reason why is because the sunlight is going down. Uh, so the day length and sunlight is going down in the fall, and that stretches out those times that, um, that our, our crops take to, to reach full maturity. So, and again, remember the whole idea here is that we want to be getting those plants to maturity before the really cold weather um, settles in. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, here's just some ideas for you. And, and again, uh, the Tuesday's uh, workshop, we talked quite a bit about some of the base crops to plant. The master course, we go through uh, you know, pretty intensely through all of the different crops that we can grow. But here's just a few ideas for you. Fall crops that you could plant would be broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi, beets, turnips, lettuce, uh, things like that. For the winter time, we are going to be looking at things like kale, spinach, mosh, arugula, carrots, parsnips, and, sweet ch and Swiss chard. Uh, there's a lot more. That's only about half of the total plants that you can be growing. Um, and we cover a lot more of those in the master uh, course as well. But th that gives you just some ideas of, of what we can be growing. Um, it's in, in most of our cold weather areas, it's pretty hard to grow these that are on this list, the fall crops, all the way through the winter because they, they're just not as hardy and they don't stand up as well. But, but all of these crops here on the winter list should be able to go all the way through the winter without any trouble. Now, we're, the, the idea though and the, the, the concept that I've got to get in your brains is we're, we're growing these crops. We want them to mature before the really cold weather settles in. And, and then basically we're using these structures that we're going to be talking about today to keep them in cold storage. Okay? They'll, and, and we'll be able to harvest fresh all winter long, but there is very little growing that happens during the winter. There just isn't enough sunlight and warmth for things to progress growing wise for most of us that are in the north. Uh, and, and so we're, we're getting things to maturity and then storing them in cold frames and hoops ha hoop houses so that we can then have them to harvest. Okay, so let's just make sure we, we all understand that. Okay, let me turn myself off here for a second so that you can see this. The first thing that I want to talk about is heavy fabric row covers. So heavy is the key word. And you can look here. This is pictures of some of my row covers. Uh, probably, I'm not sure what these are covering. This is actually from our old house. And so I can't remember if that was our strawberry beds or what it was. But um, that's a good example of heavy fabric row covers. Now, I want to make sure that you guys understand the difference. So we have light fabric row covers, which are, are very flimsy. Uh, they're very thin. Um, a lot of light and a lot of water get through those. That's not what we want to be using for winter gardening. Those are great for spring gardening, and they're very good for pest protection. But we want heavy fabric row covers. Now, I put a link down in the description of this video. It's to it's just to Amazon and, and it's an example of the heavy fabric row cover. Um, and one of the companies that sells it. There's several different companies that sell it. The one I like the best is called um, Agrabon. Um, but there are several companies that sell it. But I, I put that link in there, not particularly that I'm endorsing that brand, but instead so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. So that link is down below. Essentially what is what we're looking for is we, we need to be choosing, it, it needs to have heavy fabric row cover in the description. It should say something about protecting down to about 24 to 26 degrees Fahrenheit. It might do it differently. It may say it gives you six to eight degrees of frost protection instead. Uh, same concept or same idea there. <clears throat> and so make sure that you get the heavy stuff. That's what we want. Now, the nice thing about the heavy stuff is it lasts forever, literally. I have four pieces of heavy fabric row cover that I bought in 2009 when I started doing our year-round gardening. And that is still in very good usable shape. Um, we, we use it all the time, and it's still you know, in, in perfect shape and perfect condition. So heavy fabric row covers last forever. They're a good investment and they're going to be very handy for using 
to protect some of your crops. You're going to be putting them inside of your hoop houses and your cold frames when it gets really cold in December and January. You're going to put those in there to give you extra protection. And the other nice thing about the heavy fabric row covers and to have them around is that they are great for protecting your warm season crops from early or late frosts. So again, they're really, really effective for protecting frost down to about 26 degrees. And so you can use them to protect your tomatoes in the fall uh, or in the spring or, you know, whenever, uh, if, if you happen to have a freak early frost or late frost, um, either one of those uh, f heavy fabric row covers are going to be great for taking care of that. Okay. So that's one of the things that you are, whether you, whether you choose to do a hoop house or a cold frame, or even if you already have a greenhouse, buying some heavy fabric row cover is going to be very important in making sure that you are successful throughout the winter season. Um, so, so you know, get some, it's, it's relatively inexpensive, but I think the link that I showed you is like only $19 for a five foot by 25 foot piece. Um, and if you have lots of area that you need to cover, you can actually buy it in rows. So I've seen like um, on Gardener Supply or Johnny Seeds or places like that, they sell it in great big rolls as well. And so, you know, it, it just get some heavy fabric row cover. It's su certainly, certainly um, important, okay? All right, um, so we'll talk more about how we're gonna use that as we go along here. All right, let me turn myself off here again so that you guys can see the picture. Next, we're going to talk about mini hoop houses. Oh, you know, one thing that I did want to mention, guys. Um, greenhouses are great. Uh, and, and if you have a greenhouse, I don't want to discourage you from using them. But I, I'm, I don't know if cheap's the right word or what, but I want to make sure that what I'm teaching you guys is affordable and easy for you to do. And so I don't talk about greenhouses just because they're so dang expensive and, and bulky and hard to deal with. And so instead we're dealing with more affordable stuff, okay? So um, that's, that's why we don't do much in the, in the way of greenhouses or high hoop houses uh, with, uh, with this year round gardening master course because I'm trying to keep it affordable for you, okay? All right, so this is a look at one of our hoop houses uh, that we built. Uh, I think this one is actually, uh, based on the picture, that's one that we had at our last place. I'll show you some that we have in our current place here in a minute as well. But a hoop house, a mini hoop house, is a structure that is normally made out of like PVC or you can use a metal electrical conduit um, and it offers more protection from the cold and the wind especially than fabric row covers do. Okay. So uh, it's really simple and inexpensive to build them. Um, you're, you're just going to create a little structure and then you're just going to put some painter's plastic over it. You don't need to spend a fortune on greenhouse plastic or anything like that um, because again, we're, we're not, we've al we're already bringing the crops to maturity and so we're protecting them. So we obviously want it to be a, a clear plastic, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be the fancy stuff. It doesn't need to be the, you know, the greenhouse plastic that's so expensive. It can just be five mil or thicker um, painter's plastic. And that's, that's all you really need. And, and if, you, if you bring it in for the, win for the summer, um, that painter's plastic should last you several years. If you leave it out in the summertime, it'll, it'll rot in a season, okay? How do I know this? from experience. Um, so once once you've finished using your hoop houses, you need to take that plastic off and put it away inside. That will keep it and preserve it so that it lasts longer, okay? All right, let's uh, move on here. I think I've got a picture, yeah. So let me turn myself off here. Um, this is a, an example of my hoop house so that you can see what it looks like um, under the plastic. So essentially the way I make my hoop houses is with half inch PVC pipe. And in this case, I've got them in raised beds and you can see that I've just stuck those into the, the sides of the raised beds. You can also do, do just simple uh, hoop houses out in your garden as well. In, in that case, you're probably gonna want to buy some rebar, maybe an 18 inch piece of rebar for each one of those ends of the pipe. 
you pound that into the ground and then you put the rebar over the top, okay? So again, it's half inch PVC pipe. And then with the PVC pipe, you always need to add a ridge pull. So you can see that I've got this, this wood strip that runs along the top. You could do that with wood. You can do it with, P, with PVC as well. But you need to have that ridge pull because that offers structure and allows those hoops to stand up to the wind, okay? Then we're just gonna cover them with painter's plastic and secure it to the bed or the ground or you know whatever you need to do. And let me show you this as well. So this is this is actually one of our, our current raised beds and, and a hoop house that I just did last year. And uh, you can see I uh, the, the hoops are attached to the, the bed. They have a ridge pole. And then I just put a little strip of wood that holds the plastic down on the sides. And then at the ends, I just kind of gather it all together and I put a couple of clamps on that plastic and that will hold it from blowing around in the wind and then when I need to get into harvest either end is open like that and I can just open it up fold the plastic up over the top get into harvest however I need um, I can reach halfway from one end and halfway from the other end and it, it works really really nicely so um, mini hoop houses are very very inexpensive to make so even with today's prices you could make these mini hoop houses for um, you know, fifty dollars, seventy-five dollars tops. Uh, one when you when you choose the PVC, you don't need to choose the thicker grade PVC. You can use the thinner grade PVC because you want it to be able to bend. And uh, you can put these guys together pretty inexpensively, and they are very handy for a lot of people. So um, here's just some some ideas. If you live in Zone Eight, uh, this is probably all you're ever going to need um, is is a hoop house. Uh, it's going to provide all the protection that you need during the coldest time of the year and it's going to be really good. In zone 7, it could be all you need. Um, and I say could be because I know some zone 7 gardens, even part of our area is considered zone 7 and you still have some very long extended cold periods. And, and so depending on your zone 7, you, you may be able to just get away with a hoop house, okay? Now, if you live in zones three through six, these hoop houses are only going to be effective for the super hardy plants. So the super hardy plants would be things like um, kale, spinach, mosh, Swiss chard, totsoy. Those are all going to do fine in a hoop house, even you know down to maybe zone four. But if some of the, the ten, more tender plants that we talked about are not going to, to be able to stand up because there's just the, the hoop house gives you lots of, it, you know, it creates heat inside and it protects from the blowing and the drying winds, which that's what we need. But there's not a lot of insulation value. And so even when I have, you know, a hoop house up, even um, in the, the dead of winter, I will put fabric row cover inside the hoop house as well because that will give it just an added layer of protection to make sure that everything is okay. All right, so that is hoop houses and it looks like we're getting some questions already and uh, so hopefully we can kind of get those and, and do those. I see somebody saying a cattle panel house. Great idea. I actually have meant to do that for a couple of years now and I just never seem to get around to it. I, I've got cattle panels that we use as trellises and uh, I just have never, I, I, I haven't gotten around to it. So maybe this year <laughs> I'll get to it. Um, so I, I definitely want would like to make a, a high hoop, a little bit more of a high hoop out of, of one of those. So, okay, all right. So let's go on and we're gonna talk about cold frames and then we will get to everybody's questions. And it looks like we've got about 100 people here, so that's really good. Um, okay, so this is a picture of my cold frames. Now, there are three cold frames in this picture. They're all just side by side. My cold frames are essentially a simple wooden box with a glass top, okay? Cold frames are always going to offer the highest level of protection. Um, the reason why is because number one, they're almost always going to be more airtight. They won't be completely airtight and you don't have to stress about them being completely airtight, but they're going to be more airtight. They're also lower profile, so they're going to protect from the wind better. 
and they the the wood for the sides and the glass for the tops offer more insulation value than the plastic of a hoop house would okay so they are going to be more overall more uh, effective at keeping things uh, warm during the the winter time okay so they're going to offer you that highest level of protection um, but they can also be more expensive to build. So mine, when I built mine, and they're now, thir one of them's 13 years old, the other two are 12 years old, uh, I, they were about $125 back then. With the change in lumber costs and um, the costs of plexiglass and things like that, uh, you they, they could be considerably more expensive. I would imagine you're gonna spend at least $200 uh, to build a four by eight foot cold frame, okay? Um, so plan on that. Uh, this is a, a look at one of my cold frames as I was building it so that you can kind of see a little bit more. Um, again, we have wood and, and they're 12 inches in the back and eight, I'm sorry, six inches in the front. So 12 inches in the back. Let me think that through. I'm going to go back to eight. So they're, they're 12 inches in the back, eight inches in the front. They have an angle to them. And then mine have four lids that are made out of plexiglass. Okay. And, um, and then I have some little hooks that keep them down so that they don't blow off in the wind. Uh, now, you don't have to lock yourself into my type of cold frame. Um, this is the, the design that, uh, that I used here. It actually came with some modifications by myself from Elliot Coleman's book. And, um, and, and, and I like it, but you don't need to lock yourself in. The, the idea of a cold frame is it's a box with a glass lid, okay? So be creative. You can use glass or you can use plexiglass. You could use old storm doors. You could use old, I've seen people use like, like the old sliding, like the sliding glass doors that were so popular in the 70s and 80s. Um, those are a great solution for a cold frame. Um, I've seen people use storm doors. I've seen them use old windows. Um, the idea is that it's a box with glass lids, okay? And that the glass lids allow sunlight to come in, warms things up, keeps things warmer inside. And uh, But even in the wintertime, even when it's super cold, I still put, um, put fabric row cover inside my cold frames to, to give them more protection okay so again this is a look at my cold frames um, i love going out and cleaning the snow off and harvesting from underneath the, those cold frames um, where do we use cold frames so in zones eight and nine cold frames are overkill okay there there there's probably not a need for them in those zones. It just doesn't get cold enough, long enough for you to spend the money on those when a hoop house is going to be just fine. Okay, Zones 5, 6, and 7, and I just noticed that I goofed that up on my slide. Zones 5, 6, and 7, cold frames are perfect to have. Uh, they, they make everything really um, versatile and allows you to grow the full you know, every crop that can be grown can be grown in a, in a hoop house. And, and so um, they're, they're just really nice to have. If you live in zones three and four, cold frames, if you want to have a harvest all the way through the winter, cold frames are 100% must, okay? Unless you have a greenhouse, um, they, they're, they're definitely something that you are going to need to keep those crops toasty warm during those long, long, cold, cold stretches that, that, that I know you guys have, okay? So the only way you're gonna be able to pull that off is if you have a good, solid cold frame um, for that area, okay? All right, um, so let me see if there's anything else that I wanna talk about. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything that, that, I, was, that I was gonna cover today. So um, let, if you guys wanna go ahead and start um, throwing up your questions that would be great and we'll kind of move on here and I'll talk a little bit about the master course and then we'll do the prize drawing and then I'll get to your questions we're about a half hour in we've got 125 people here so let's go ahead and cover that so just really quickly those of you that have been here already um, have, have had the sales pitch already but right now we have the year-round gardening master class which is available and it is a much more in-depth look at year-round gardening. It's about five and a half hours long and it is a great course to teach you what you need to know 
to extend your growing season. Um, five and a half hours worth of instruction. We break that down into weekly groups. We go through two modules each week um, over the next four weeks. Also, I have a Q&A session for each of these uh, weeks. And so uh, every Thursday we do a live Q&A session. I'm going to get on Zoom and do a, a call for you there so that you guys can ask your questions and, and get those answered. We also have a little private Facebook group that goes along with it, but you don't have to feel like you have to join the Facebook group. We don't do anything educational in there. It's just kind of a place to ask an occasional question or, or to show off what we're doing. Um, so you don't need to feel like if you're not on, um, if you're not on uh, Facebook that you're going to miss out because you won't. Okay. All right. So normal price for this course is $69. And I'm supposed to remember to tell you guys that we are going to be raising the price of this course next year. So we haven't decided exactly where we're going, but uh, it, probably at least $10 or $20 um, we are going to be going up next year. So this is a great opportunity for you to join now. And because you guys have been so faithful in coming to the uh, uh, workshops, I'm going to give you a little bit of a discount. So uh, there's a link down in the description of this video that's got arrows and everything pointing to it so that you guys can see it. Uh, that link, if you click on that, that will take you over to the sales page and will apply a $10 discount. So you can get it for $59. And remember, we are closing this course on July 15th. So um, it's only available till tomorrow. Uh, and then we're done. Um, we do open it back up in th around Thanksgiving, but we don't do the big event like this, and we don't do the Q and A's and things like that. So it's an opportunity for you to join again, but you don't get the full treatment uh, at that time of year. So um, hurry and get signed up for it. Uh, and again, remember, we're also going to be raising the price next year. Kind of feels like I'm trying to create urgency, but <laughs> but we are. And so um, I've, I've actually had several people tell me that I'm not charging enough for it. So um, we may may actually do that. Now, if you guys get signed up today, and this is the last time that I'm going to make this offer, if you get signed up by the end of the day today, you can get my free succession planting mini course as well. It's about a 25 minute long course that talks about succession planting, the three different types of succession planting, and how you can use those and incorporate those into your garden uh, to extend your growing season and to make your garden more productive. So you can get that course free um, if you sign up before midnight tonight, okay? All right, again, before we announce our prize winners, let's thank our sponsors, Honest Seed Company and Smart Pots. They are awesome, and you should go and check them out and give them a big thank you for sponsoring the prizes. And there are links down in the description of this video to both of their websites, and I made sure they're there this time, so um, you should be able to see those. All right, so let's announce the winners. And again, um, we most people only gave their first name, but I do have their emails so tied to the names so um, I will email everybody and so that everybody knows we've been giving prizes away like crazy and uh, this this is all pretty busy for me and so we will um, will actually be uh, contacting you guys via email um, between now and Monday uh, to, to get the information so that we can get you your prizes so um, let's uh, just so you know be patient We'll have those to you fairly quickly, okay? All right, so here we go. The um, This is for the Honest Seeds uh, $25 gift certificates that you can use on their website. And the winners are Leah, Jean, and Shelton Cotham, okay? So congratulations to you guys. And then for the Smart Pots, Bonnie won the 15-gallon and Mary won the 5-gallon. And again, I do know your email addresses, so we will um, get you... Uh, that information. So expect to see something from me, um, you know, sometime within the next three or four days. I'll, I'll email everybody that has won. I've got 15 prizes that I've got to deal with, and and so uh, we'll get those out to you. And uh, um, the companies are going to actually be sending those directly to you. So we'll get that going. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at questions. We've still got 125 people here. That is awesome. So um, let's go through and take a look at some of the questions. AJ, it looks like, has been able to get those. Um, okay, Deborah, I think I responded to you. You received the email for the workbook, but no workbook. So you actually have to click on the link, and then it just takes you back over to our website where you can download it. If you're still having problems, email me, and I'll respond directly with that link. Um, so uh, I, I want to make sure you get the workbook, so make sure that you, uh, you know, that you 
just shoot me an email and we'll get that taken care of, okay? Let me take a drink here. Okay, and um, DK, we talked about the closed captions already. I'll see what we can do about that. Um, uh, now, what about medium mill thick thickness plastic sheets? So uh, the, the bare minimum that you want to use for the plastic sheets on your hoop houses is going to be um, is going to be five mil. Um, you could even go down to like um, you know four or three mil uh, if you wanted. Uh, the the thicker it is, the 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 hardier it's going to be. So the longer it's going to last. Um, the thin stuff is going to get shredded. So you know that just like the the ground cloth or ground cover um, painters plastic that's really super thin. It's it's and you know what guys, I totally just went the backwards on those numbers. It's it's five mil or you want to go six or seven mil. Um, I went backwards. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, you don't want to use the really thin stuff, which is going to be like the three mil or the two mil. Um, you don't want to use that thin stuff because it, it'll get shredded by the wind. The first time you have a really strong wind, the first little cut or you know tear that it gets in it, it's just going to come apart. So you want to use that thicker stuff, at least five mil, maybe six or seven mil. And I apologize, I totally did those backwards in my brain while I was saying that, so I apologize there. Um, okay, uh, Deborah is asking, um, you use grow bags, will this work with grow bags, okay? Yes and no. So containers, um, if you live in like zone eight, it, you'll be fine uh, growing in the winter in containers. Uh, you, you'll, you'll just be able to cover things up and, and, and it never gets cold enough that they really freeze hard. But the problem with containers, even the fabric containers, is that they, um, they freeze too hard. And so you can't, there, there, there's just not enough protection that you can give them to keep them from freezing really hard and that's going to kill your plants. So um, you can definitely use the, the ideas that we've talked about here and the fabric roll covers and maybe even like a mini hoop house to extend your growing season. So that may add four to six weeks to your growing season. Um, so instead of being done with your garden in the middle of October, you might not be done until the first of December. Um, you know, and again, that totally depends on your zone and where you're at. But, but um, to to really try in containers to get stuff to last all the way through the winter, those those December and January and February temperatures are so cold that those containers just freeze hard, and it, and it will kill all your plants, and they they just won't survive um, in there. So. You can definitely extend your growing season using hoop houses um, and fabric grow covers, but you're not going to be able to get the whole winter uh, if you're in containers, okay? Sorry about that. Um, all right, uh, Nancy is asking, can you store regular white potatoes in ground over the winter? Um, so I'm not sure, Nancy, if you're talking about like in a cold frame, you definitely could try and overwinter your potatoes in a cold frame and they would come up extra early and you'd have a really early harvest. The one worry is, is that those cold frames are going to get really warm. And so you may, you know, if you put potatoes in the ground and then cover them with a cold frame, they're, they're, they may sprout and come up in February. And then you still have two months worth of frost and those, those plants are going to get big. And potatoes are frost tolerant, but they're not frost resistant. Okay, and so if they get frosted, it's going to really set them back. So that would be my only really big concern. Now, if you're talking about just storing them, there are a whole bunch of different solutions for storing potatoes um, in the ground. You're, you know, you're going to put them, you could put them in an insulated cooler. You could put them in a, um, like a garbage can and bury it in the ground. I actually use, if you guys see this window back behind me, we, I, so this is a basement. We're in a basement uh, room here and that's a big deep window well and uh, we actually will store our potatoes because this isn't a bedroom this is my office and so we don't have to worry about fire escape here um, and there's another window right over here too 
So we will, we will use this, we create a little root cellar in this window and we put an insulated top on it and everything and, and store our potatoes that way. So hopefully there's a few, and I actually did a video on that. If you wanna go check my website out, you can see what we do. Um, and it's, I think I did a video on the channel, so you can go watch that, okay? All right, um, Shannon, zone five, <laughs> isn't on, I must have totally spaced zone five on that. I apologize, guys, that I missed zone five on that slide. Um, okay, what directions do the cold frames face? Very good question. So you want them to, you want the slope of the cold frame to face south, okay? So uh, that's preferred. Um, if, you know, you know, if you, like, if you're trying to put them on a raised bed that's oriented north-south already, um, you know, we might want to talk about that a little bit because you probably don't want a, a slope. Uh, you know, I might consider making two four-foot, you know, cold frames instead, both of which slope south. Um, but that's the preferred direction. So uh, if at all possible, you want, to, you want the high point to be in the north and the low point to be in the south and the full exposure to be south. That lets the, the most sun in. Um, if that's not possible, west would be your next solution. So have the slope go to the west um, because that's when the warmest sunlight and the brightest sunlight in the winter is going to be. So, But south orientation would probably be the best in, in almost any situation. Okay, Unless you live in the southern hemisphere, then you're going to do that backwards. Um, when do I remove the humidity dome from the trays for in, indoor seed starting? Okay, Liz, great question. Um, not really related, but, but I'll answer it anyways. I hate humidity domes. Um, I don't use them. Instead, I use just a piece of um, saran wrap, plastic wrap. I just put that over the top, and then I remove that as soon as all of the seeds have germinated. Okay. If you, it, the reason why I hate humidity domes is because they're so tall, you can't get the lights close enough to your plants to, to keep them from getting leggy, okay? And so I don't like those humidity domes at all. If you've got a big, bright, fancy, expensive grow light, then maybe that's not gonna be an issue. But if you're just using you know traditional shop lights or something like that, you want those lights to be as close as possible and those humidity domes get in the way. And as soon as those seeds start to germinate, they, they start stretching for the light because the light's not close enough. So I, I prefer to use plastic wrap. That way I can keep the, the lights really close. And then once everything germinates, I take the plastic wrap off, okay? Um, how do I water stuff when the weather gets cold? Okay, the nice thing about this is you don't have to. So again, remember, we're putting this into cold storage. So as long as you have been watering well through you know October and November, once the really cold weather starts to settle in, you actually don't have to water your plants, okay? So I, I either water or, you know, so here in, in our area, we will start mid-October, weather starts really start, starts to break down, and we will uh, start getting rain and we'll start getting snow. And is what I will do is I will just leave my hoop house or my cold frames open during those storms, as long as it's a daytime storm, um, and let that water the ground, okay? And then I'll put, you know, I'll cover them up for night when it's gonna be really cold. And, and, and as long as you keep them watered through, for me, it's about mid-November, um, then you, you don't have to worry about them for, you know, I don't water at all in December and January and February. I start watering again in March. So um, the one exception to that might be if you're, you know, if you're out and doing some planting in the wintertime and the soil seems dry, you may want to do a little bit of watering just so that there's moisture in the soil for when the, the seeds actually germinate, okay? But you really don't have to water in the summertime, okay? or in the wintertime, sorry. Um, so uh, someone's saying, um, I've had six mil plastic over my cold frames throughout the winter in 6A and it works really well, okay? So six mil, and again, I apologize guys that I totally messed up and did the backwards numbers before. Um, Row covers just go directly down on the plants like a blanket. Yes, exactly. That's that's exactly what I do. So I'm just going to throw those down. Uh, I'll use them in the you know in the fall, the early fall when we still have warmth and sunlight, but we have a, a night that's going to be really frosty. I'll throw them over then, um, and then take them off 
you know, during the daytime so that the plants still get plenty of sunlight. And then later in the winter, I just throw them on and they just kind of sit on there like a blanket, okay? And, uh, and that's a good description of it. Um, so Ellie is saying she's used gray plastic tubes due to a black walnut tree and I have spinach and Brussels sprouts that survive without cover. Um, would clear plastic tubes be okay? to try as a cold frame? Yes, definitely. Um, the clear, getting that sunlight in is definitely going to help. Um, and, and it's going to help them to grow a little bit. And remember, we don't get a lot of growth in the winter, but we do get some. And so having that light come in would be really good. Um, Clarice is wondering, I would like to know how to use cold frames in zones five and six. Um, you know, exactly how I've described. We're, we're going to be using those for, you know, your, your carrots, your spinach, your lettuce, your, you know, bok choy, all of those, you're going to be planting in those cold frames and using those over the winter time, okay? Um, how do we store the plastic after the cold season is over? So I take mine off of my hoops, fold it up, and put it in a shed or in my garage. Um, so I'll just fold it back up and put it in. And if I do that, it lasts. If I don't, like, Two years ago, I built a new hoop house that, that I put on hinges, and I thought, oh, I'll just go put it over here in the corner in the shade of the trees. It didn't last. It, it only lasted one season, and that's the only time I've ever had it last just one season. And so you got to bring it in and keep it out of the sun in order for it to last, okay? Um, so Sherry is saying, can you, use, can you just use a tarp? Um, tarps, so the, the fabric row covers are and I'm going to sound like a fabric row cover salesman here. <laughs> the fabric row covers are designed to do a certain job, okay? So they're meant to protect from frost. That they're, they're designed for that, and so they are going to work better than a tarp. Um, in a pinch, if you're trying to protect from frost, obviously a tarp is going to be better than nothing, but those fabric row covers are actually going to uh, work better and last longer than a tarp would. And they also, even though the heavy fabric row covers block a lot of the sun, they don't block all of the sun. And so you still get sunlight coming through, whereas with a tarp, it's going to block all of the sun out. Um, and so there's quite a few advantages to using the, the fabric row cover. Um, and like I say, it's not terribly expensive and it lasts a long, long time. Longer than a tarp would. You know, leaving a tarp laying out in the garden all winter long, it's maybe going to last two seasons whereas these are going to last years and years and years. Um, okay, what do you think about adding a roll of ventilation to the side of cattle panel house? How could the corners be done like a regular greenhouse? Um, boy, I, 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 we'd have to have a longer discussion on that. Um, I'm not sure I'm completely understanding what you're talking about. You With the cattle panel house, you're going to need to have some ventilation um, because one thing that you guys need to recognize is hoop houses and cold frames and greenhouses increase the temperature. So inside you, those structures, the temperature is going to be at least 30 degrees warmer than it is outside. And so if you have like a 50 degree day in November, it's going to be 80, 85 degrees inside your cold frame or your hoop house. That's too hot for most of our cool season crops. And so you're going to want to ventilate them. So definitely as you're designing a... Um, as you're designing a, a, a hoop house like that, you are definitely going to want to make sure you include some, um, some ventilation, okay? Um, are there instructions for building a cold frame in the workbook? No, but there is on my website. So if you go to Our Stony Acres, uh, I actually have a, a post on how to build uh, the cold frame like I have, okay? And it's also included um, in uh, the the master course as well. So so I, I go through a, a, a good long description of how to do that um, as well and take you through that. Um, okay, how many cold frames and hoop houses would you recommend for veggies for a family of five? So the kind of the standing um, recommendation for that is a four by eight foot, two, I'm sorry, two four by eight foot beds per person if you want to have enough fresh veggies to make it all the way through the winter, okay? So for a family of five, that would be 10. That's a lot. <laughs> we had a family of six, 
uh, now we're down to the, there's there's just four of us left because kids have moved out. But um, and we most years we have five beds. Okay, so I have three that are covered with cold frames and two that are covered with hoop houses, and um, that does a pretty good job of giving us quite a bit of fresh produce throughout the winter. But it doesn't cover everything. But I also knew that the end would be coming <laughs> and you know i mean we're probably this winter well, there'll only be three of us and and so you know it's it's going to provide everything that we need and i didn't want to have 10 cold frames hanging around uh you know that that wouldn't be used later so that's the recommendation two four by eight foot beds per person should give you enough food to make it through the winter so if you want to do 10 there you go that's what you would need um, and depending on where you live, you may be able to pull that off with hoop houses, uh, which would, you know, kind of save you some money. Um, all right, so Lily is saying uh, Southwest might be the ideal direction for cold frames. Actually, no, South is, is the ideal direction because if you turn it Southwest, you're going to miss some of the morning and, and, and early like noontime sun, you're going to have shadows in your cold frame. So south orientation is the best because you're going to get the most exposure all day long um, to that, uh, you know, to that bed. Um, and could you use clear plastic shower curtains? If you've got them, you can use them. I, believe it or not, I, I've actually improvised some hoop houses from those things. The one thing that you need to recognize is that's probably only a one-time use idea because that plastic is not going to be UV protected. It's not, it's, you know, it's most likely going to break down after one season, maybe a couple. But if you've, you know, if you've got those and, and you're not using them, then yeah, go for it. But buying the painter's plastic, like the five or six mil painter's plastic, ultimately is going to be cheaper. Don't go out and buy plastic shower curtains. Um, just buy the painter's plastic because that's ultimately going to be better and um, the painter's plastic will hold up longer than that you know the, the shower curtain plastic isn't meant to be out in the sun and in the cold weather and so even though it will hold up to water it's not going to hold up to the other elements okay all right um, I think that is it let me just kind of roll through here um, yeah okay great wow we still had a hundred plus people here uh, at the end so um, awesome all right guys thank you very much let me just really quick um, remind you that the year-round gardening master course ends tomorrow so so enrollment ends tomorrow and so if you want to get signed up you need to get signed up either today or tomorrow and if you get signed up today you get that bonus course okay all right thank you guys this has been a lot of fun we have had great participation um, and a lot of t you know, a lot of people that have come and I've just really enjoyed this series this year um, I think that I'm gonna pr probably try and do some more of these workshops um, kind of throughout the year uh, on different topics instead because we've had a lot of people that have really enjoyed them and participated so keep an eye out for that okay all right so thank you again go and click that link and go buy the master course that is um, you know what I'm all about right now is is getting that master course uh, getting people in and by the way we already have 120 people that have joined so we're gonna have a really good group this year that's the biggest group we've ever had already and we still have two days left so come and join us uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun and it, just a, a great group I know there's gonna be a lot of energy I, I'm seeing more comments and questions already than than what we normally have and so uh, you know it's gonna be a good fun group with a lot of um, you know, a lot of, of, of fun stuff to learn. So come and join us, okay? All right, guys, thank you again for your support, for, for following us on our channel and, and everything. Really appreciate it. And thanks for being here. Okay, happy gardening, guys. We'll see you later.